I'm going to talk to you today about the Navigator workflow. The Navigator workflow is a server client based workflow. You have three parts to this workflow. You have the server, which is this text window here. You have a RIP that the server connects to and you make your page setups for your various job flows here and you have your client which connects the two. In your client is where you'll be doing all your work. You will make workflows which is this column here. If you select a workflow you see the basic diagram of the workflow and the bottom part here will be where your jobs go. I'm going to explain each one of these pieces in more detail but I'm going to go through a job here real quick and show you how this each individual piece works and how to flow a job through. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a job and I'm going to drop it on the diagram of the workflow or on the individual names. I prefer to drop it on the diagram. And once you drop it you'll see it pop in here and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go through a pre-flight. To look at that pre-flight report I would open up the folders here and just double click on that pre-flight report. It will open it up in Acrobat and you'll see our pre-flight uses the InFocus Pit Stop Library and there were no errors or fixes to be done so we can close that and to move to the next piece I will hit the play button here and it skip ink remapping because there are no spot colors in this job and it's going to go straight to imposition and to use the imposition we use impo2 from dynagram and I'm going to create a new imposition based on the wizard so the wizard here sees what size the file is it sees how many pages are in this file and when I hit next it's going to ask me binding style which I'll hit next sheet size the gripper area and where do I want this to be in position on the sheet whether I can snap it to the gripper or I can center it on the sheet and how are we flipping the paper are we flipping it same gripper or are we changing grippers we're going to go ahead and do this vertical access it's going to ask me uh, what my folding pattern is it does remember what you chose last time and then you can also have rotation bleeds uh, spine gutter a vertical gutter if you had more than fit more than this on you'd have a horizontal gutter and you can actually offset this vertically and horizontally from the center or if you chose to snap to the gripper from the gripper as well I could put different marks on there I can put trim marks side guides center marks and different different side guides depending on what I my press one wanted to put on there. I can put register marks in. I can put text marks in for a slug line so that everyone knows what job, what sheet, and what surface we're working with, and different color bars as well. And when I hit next, it'll give me a little rundown. If I needed a work and turn, I can tell it where I wanted my work and turn. If I was going to apply creep, it would tell me, I would tell it how thick my paper was, and it would apply creep automatically. And when I hit finish, it shows me my job. When I want to output it, I'll do as simple as choosing output and sending it right back to the same place that it was. You see it's already finished. I'll close that. And I could save that now if I if I had chosen to. And I will hit the play button here. It is going to go through and it's going to rip my imposed job and you see now I've got actually got an imposed PDF in my job folder once it finishes ripping I can choose the magnifying glass and I can view this in my viewer and things I can do in my viewer is I can zoom in zoom area, I can do a marquee zoom 
And what I'm viewing here is actually my one bit TIFFs that I'll be sending out to my output device or my TIFF catcher. I can turn colors on and off. And I can also view the second page of this document as well. Go back to full page and you see that this is the back of that A pager. And if I'm happy with it, I can hit the close the window. And when I want to output it, I would just hit the play button. And you'll see in my my rip here that we're outputting all the pages that will be sent to my output device. So let's go through each one of these individually. First thing I want to one I want to show you is our ink remapping, our ink remapping page action and I'm going to drag a file and I'm going to throw it right on there and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go to ink remapping and you'll notice that this icon here lights up when there are spot colors available and by selecting that it brings up this window and using this window I can do many things I can take that yellow and I can combine it to be on the yellow channel. I can do the same with the blue and I can add that red back into that PMS and I can also if I chose to I could make it a CMYK mix and here I can choose what angle I would like it to go to and when I hit apply it'll go to the rip and then I can view that file And by turning off, I can turn my black off to make sure I'm overprinting, which I am down here. I can zoom in and I can check traps. Okay. So that's our ink remapping workflow action. The next workflow action I'd like to show you is our pre flight. And what we can do is we can open up our workflow and we can select our pre-flight and see that I've, I have it paused. I'm choosing the profile I would like to use and I'm asking it to generate a report. I could also add action lists here. And these are what comes canned with the system. You can of course create your own in pit stop and import them into the system as well as your pre-flight profile. You may create your own and bring it in. And to close my editor, I will hit that pencil again. And when I drop a file onto this, it is going to pause it and I can open up my pre-flight and look at that report and see if there are any issues with this file. Uh, there's a warning for image resolution. And if you have pit stop loaded on your system where your client currently resides, if you hit the magnifying glass it will highlight the area that it is talking about so that you can have a better understanding of what we're doing here okay and you can save this file out and actually send it to uh, your clients put it in your job folder whatever wherever you would like to keep that information that's totally up to you that is our pre-flight another uh, action that we have is a raster PDF and raster PDF is good if you're going to send files to a color management program for your Epson's or proofing. If you want to send files to your customer for soft proofing, you can drop the jobs on the raster PDF and you will create the PDF into a, a location that you specify and that can be emailed as well. We also have the imposition which I showed you We're using Impo2, which is a plugin for Acrobat. And then in this, in these different workflows, we can add different pieces of workflows. I can add copies. If after I get it imposed, I want to add a copy to a raster PDF, what it will do at this point, it, it will pre-flight it, do the ink remapping, do the imposition, and then copy that file to the raster PDF to create a my raster PDF, and then it will rip it for plates. And the, the good thing about that is, is using the same rip engine, using the same everything, so you're assured that the files will rip the same way accordingly. 
we'll go over this area up here. This is how I view all the jobs. When I have different workflows selected, you'll see them pop down here. Uh, this is how I would edit the workflow. And, and using this simple, um, let's go here. Um, this is how I would make the job go to the next step. And you see the little bubble there. Uh, I would pause a job that's currently outputting or ripping. I could restart the job in another workflow if I felt I inadvertently put it in the wrong workflow. I could copy the job to another workflow, so it would be multiple workflows. I could delete the job as well, and that will completely delete it from the system. This is our ink remapping, and that's when I told you that the icon highlights when there are spot colors in a job. This is my information. It will tell me I can change priority here, the status of the job, what's happening, everything that's happened to the job. And then this is how I would view that job once it's been ripped. So I can view it before I commit any metal to it. Once I work on a job, I could right click on the job and I can edit the job spot colors from there or I could actually edit the entire workflow. I could make a job or a workflow that is just for this job, like adding a stabilizer or adding a pre-flight. Uh, and then I would answer these questions. And this only affects this job. It does not affect the workflow that it came from. And then you'll see that when we do that to a job, we get this little pencil icon here to let everybody know that the job has been edited in some way, shape, or form that's not running through your normal workflow. You'll also notice that when we edit a particular workflow, we get a list of things that we can add to that workflow. And that's as simple as dragging and dropping and then going through each one of these to make sure that you have everything on here that you would like. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can rename the workflow at any point in time. You can change the priority of that workflow. In the hop and the pre-flight, we can add different profiles. I can add action lists. I can generate a report if I felt I needed to. In my ink remapping, in my RIP, this looks very similar to the page setup in the RIP. Uh, I could choose different page setups here that would go to different places. I could change separation styles. I could give it color management, change the trapping change the resolution. I can't change the resolution, but I can choose different resolutions based on where I'm going. And I can have different calibrations and different press curves based on the presses that I wanted to set to. That is a quick demo of the Navigator workflow.